Good evening, everyone. I'm Leslie Pollard, president of Oakwood University, and we are coming to you on Oakwood Praise. Uh, this is a little bit unusual format for us. We are simply coming to you tonight by virtue of the Zoom room. And with me tonight is our special guest, Dr. Jesse Wilson. For those of you who have missed our last two installments, this is the culmination of how to overcome the virus of worry. And Dr. Wilson brings a hefty portfolio to this council and this perspective. Uh, he serves as director of the BCBLC, the Bradford Cleveland Brooks Leadership Institute here at Oakwood University. He is a long-term pastor of many large church complexes. He is also a professor of religion at Oakwood University School of Religion. And of course, he is the uh, husband of uh, Ms. Sherry Wilson, who is our executive director for advancement and development. And Dr. Wilson is a sought after speaker, a global traveler and workshop facilitator. And we're honored to have him with us tonight, once again, for the final installment and if you've been listening, like I have, I have been blessed personally by the insights that he has shared. In fact, I've mentioned it before, but he was our family pastor for 14 years while we lived in Riverside, California. So Dr. Je Dr. Jesse Wilson, welcome, welcome, Dr. Wilson. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to be with you again. Well, thank you. Sir, th some of these important topics that we've been talking about, but for those who haven't been with us, um, would you say a little bit about some of the ground we've covered and especially some of the important biblical perspectives that will help us manage the worry and the anxiety and the care that so many feel tonight, the coronavirus? Right. We have been looking at fear. We've been looking at uh, worry against the backdrop of this pandemic. And uh, one of the things that we said early on was that you don't want to compound the emotional damage that uh, some people are struggling right now with the added pressure of being guilty about how you feel. And we wanted to make clear from the outset that when we hear the words worry, when we hear the words fear, the Bible uses those words, both of those words, positively and negatively. If you're using worry as a, as, a, as a type of Christian concern, we should always be worried in that sense about our brothers and sisters. If you're talking about fear uh, in the sense of uh, an awe or respect, particularly as we use it in the context of, context of worship, two very appropriate emotions, but when they get out of control, they can tear you apart, particularly in times of crisis. <clears throat> Okay, so then as I think about it, then in listening to what you're telling us, we have to be careful because those in fear, worry, uh, healthy concern are very close to each other. They live very close. Is that what you're saying? They live very close to each other. And, it, and they manifest themselves in different ways in different people. And things that we should be aware of, certain things that we should in include our daily calendars. Uh, as best we can, and some things we need to avoid. We talked about avoiding during this time fake news. Many mm. of us are really victims of uh, media overload, sensory overload, and so positive and negative news can have an impact on us, and so I think we need to monitor uh, the amount of information that we are processing mentally, if it's positive or negative, but particularly the fake news because it can have us uh, afraid of things that really aren't happening at all. Then we talked about, as best we can, uh, monitoring the influence of our, quote, friends. Some of our friends and family members are by nature negative. It's just the way that it is. I'm not, there's no commentary on why they are, what they are. Mm -hmm. But I do think that for our own mental health, we need to monitor the, the, uh, the influence that our uh, friends and neighbors and uh, relatives might have on us uh, personally in terms of the conversations they have, the things that they're worried about. If they're overly worried, that word might translate or transfer over to you. So be aware of the impact that negative people can have on you, fake news can have on you. And then early on, we were very, very intentional about directing everyone to the Bible because false prophets and false prophecies abound in these days. I was reading just today 
reminder of what happened when Reagan was the president. And I remember uh, clearly some of the false prophets claiming that uh, Ronald Reagan was the beast power because he was uh, Ronald Wilson Reagan. And there were uh, six letters in every name. <laughs> six, six, six. Six, six, six. And man, I mean, they, they ran with that. Same thing happened when we were going through uh, Y2K. And, uh, and, and, and I, don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to minimize the impact of the crisis, of these crises that we experienced in our lives. But I will say that we really need to be clear about where we receive our information and to whom we, from whom we receive our information because we want to make sure that what we are uh, looking at, what we're listening to, what we're reading is uh, founded in the Word of God. Yes, I'd like your commentary on something because so many people have taken the coronavirus and also likened it to like biblical plagues, whether from Exodus or from the book of Revelation. Um, I have some friends who, who have a penchant for doing that. And um, t if you were giving guidance to a group of Bible students, a student wrote me the other day about these very questions, a group of Bible students, how do you avoid the pitfalls of, of extremism and yet being a healthy alertness and kind of being conscious of where we are in the stream of time? But how would you help us avoid the pitfalls that come associating the coronavirus with with something more than it may even be? What, 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 how, how would you do that with students? Yeah, I think if I uh, had this question uh, posed to me, I would get back to context, 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 context. It's absolutely true. It's almost an overstatement, but it is absolutely true that you can make the Bible say practically what you want the Bible to say. And so it's extremely important for us to determine the context of a passage. To whom is it speaking? Uh, at, to what context? Very important because what God is saying to one group of individuals might not be, might not, excuse me, pertain uh, to you. When it comes to the uh, last day events uh, that we are experiencing, I think it's important to understand the context of last day events. The reality is <clears throat> uh, Paul, the biblical writers, considered themselves to be in the quotes, waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Um, and when you look at Demics, the reality is, and maybe this is what's helpful to me, mm -hmm. okay? Context is very important. I think context when it comes to understanding the Bible is, is critical. But I think it's also on, it's important to recognize that some of what we struggle with insofar as pandemics just point to the fact that not only have we been cursed by sin, the nature that we deal with, has, nature, I should say, that we deal with has been likewise cursed. And so for what we see as awe-inspiring can turn on us in a minute. And so until the point that God redeems us all, including the nature that we're exposed to and marvel in uh, in these days, we're going to be wrestling with pandemics. We're going to be wrestling with uh, different natural disasters. Are these signs of uh, the fact that we're in the last days as they worsen? They certainly are. But the reality is I don't think that there has been a point in history when we haven't wrestled with the curse of sin. Oh, wow. Nation. That's powerful. That, that, that is powerful, Jesse. Thank you for sharing it. And as we get ready to wrap up this segment, we're going to turn to Scripture, too, just to get some insights on how we can actually do the things that you're talking about and take advantage of whatever the opportunity is within this crisis. How can we have so much time all of a sudden? And then to know how to use it in a way that, that, that at the end of this, when a pandemic ends, and it will end, I think we all agree to that, it will end, but that we come out on the other side of it, God willing, stronger and better and health focused and more bonded to family and all of those things that would make for a useful experience right. in this time. Um, as, as you are listening, talking to our listeners now just for a moment, as you think about your life and you think about the place where you are, wherever you are, you might be full of fear or you might be full of faith during this time. 
again, we at Oakwood University want to just remind you that it is not inimical or antithetical to faith to practice all of the best hygienic practices that have been laid out for all of us. That doesn't make us unfaith. We like to say here on Oakwood Praise that, that the God who gave the herbs also gave the science. Right. That same gave us both of those things. And, and the wisdom is knowing how to use what and when to use it in its appropriate place. Someone said, knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. So we gonna be. <laughs> so we just. Well, I, I told you, Pastor Wilson, I collect proverbs. That's one of them. And uh, yeah, one. that's a good one, isn't it? Knowledge is knowing that a tomato, in fact, is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. So we want to. We want to take the knowledge that God gives us, and we want to do the things that He wants us to do. With there's a place for natural remedies. Uh, amen. There we are. But there's also a place for scientific medicine. Same God who gave the, now I'm, a, now, I'm a, now, now I'm meddling, who gave dolomite also gave penicillin. Come on, say it as He gave penicillin. And so when you think about then and, and how we do that, just know that we've got a lot of work to do in terms of being in the place where God wants us to be. And maybe to our listeners, maybe God has given you this time, has given me this time, given Dr. Wilson this time, for us to take a few moments and to just catch our breath, calibrate for the next steps in our journey. You can help us as we do our journey. Uh, we are running a campaign now called All In, and it's all focused on how to help students matriculate through Oakwood University. We want you to enjoy this time, but please take a special note of this little, this little invitation to participate in our All In campaign. I'm Linda Anderson, and I am all in OU 2020. Hello, everyone. My name is Candace Thompson, and I'm all in OU 2020. My name is Miriam Battles, and I'm all in for OU 2020. Hi, my name is Tammy, and I'm all in OU 2020. My name is Pastor Rugless and I'm all in OU 2020. Hi, I'm Vivian English Washington. And I'm Mark Washington. And, and we're, we're all, all in for OU 2020. Hello everyone, my name is Emil Parker and I'm all in OU 2020. Hi, I'm Sherry Wilson and I am all in for my alma mater, Oakwood University. We're asking you to join us in the mission of Oakwood University and to support students. I'm Leslie Pollard, and I'm all in with OU 2020. OU 2020 is your opportunity to do something that can make a difference in the lives of students. I'm standing here by the bell tower. For almost 70 years, this has been an iconic symbol of students in partnership with the alumni in making life better for all of our students. So go all in. OU 2020, give today, and you can make a difference in the life of a student. Welcome back, everyone, and I trust that you enjoy that little moment when you have an opportunity to think about how, wherever you are, how you can help us facilitate the transformational education of Oakwood University. Now, Dr. Wilson, we want to go to the Bible in this, 
this segment as we get ready to wrap up. And one of the key passages that have to deal with the times in which we live is one that's found in Ephesians. And I have a Bible program that I use called Lagos, and this is not an ad for Lagos. There are hundreds of Bible programs out there. That just to be the one that I use. But I'm going to share a part of the screen. And to all of our observers and listeners, just ignore the Greek and all the Bible commentary. And let's just focus on the text of Scripture that that we focus on. And I'd like to get Dr. Wilson's comment and even his exegesis on it. And it's taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 5, and you can see it right here, verse 15, if you watch my cursor. The scripture says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, boy, the Bible can be direct, can't it? Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Right. Dr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson, what does that, what does that passage have to say to us during this coronavirus? I think I might need to take the edge off by reading it in the NIV also. <laughs> <laughs> Could you take the edge NIV off then, please? Be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. <laughs> okay. Making the most of every opportunity for the days are evil. We're redeeming the time by making the most of every opportunity, which um, goes into how we ended the last program, those things that we should be doing. You know, I've noticed an interesting war of words on the internet between two camps of people. There's this camp that is obviously pressure to produce during the oh, yes. doing mini series and putting all types of uh, books together. Then there's the other group that seems to be a little bitter of, at that group or annoyed by that. But they, their mantra is, we're not human doings, we're human beings. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that. It's that tension. And so I think this passage is very instructive because we don't need to be pressured to produce necessarily during this downtime, but we do need to redeem the time. And I believe when the Bible talks about redeeming the time, it, it means to uh, give value to your time. It, it, it means uh, possessing something, repossessing something, instilling value in it, buying that thing. And time is something that, uh, for reasons that we never uh, would have believed, we have a lot of, or I should say, more of now than we usually than we usually do. And so there are certain things that I believe that we need to, to do to re redeem the value the time that God has given us during this pandemic. As unfortunate as the reason for this uh, additional time is, I think it's important for us to, quote, redeem the time. Okay. Now, so, so, what, so tell, no, no, no. I, I'm curious about that. So families are spending a lot of time together, yeah, yeah. a lot of time. As a matter of fact, I, I read an article, and I, I'd like our viewers to look at it just for a moment, and, and the idea, and I love your, your commentary on it, five ways that your family can thrive while stuck at home. Now, that's, that's one way to, to describe it, right? Not, 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 not I get to be at home, but I have to be at home. That's what this, this seems to read like, but, but, but ways you can thrive. And of course, they give us two or three, and lo we love your commentary. Keep your minds and hearts active. Do kids' church with biblical videos. Don't neglect your own spiritual and mental health, which is what we've been talking about. Deepen your family devotions with classic resources. So, Dr. Wilson, any of those points of departure, feel free to talk about any of them. Yeah, I have my grandson in. I had a couple of my grandsons in during this pandemic, and I tell you, all this stuff resonates with me, buddy. Uh, <laughs> and hearts, and then legs, and their feet active. I'm really impressed by uh, Oaktown and Oakwood University. Oh, that, yes, I am too. I mean, that stuff is creative. If I had it to do over again, if I had the opportunity to staff a church as I had opportunities before, I would start with the children's pastor because yeah, right, yeah. you have the children occupied and discipled, everybody else is coming with them. Everybody else is coming uh, with yes. them. Yes. As a matter of fact, I watched Oaktown, Pastor Mark Raphael from the great yeah. Oakwood University Church. And I thought to myself, that Jess, I did this, and I don't mean it in any pun way. I, I thought there once was a minister who loved children, and they called him Mr. Robinson. Isn't that something? And for the first time, I saw a minister mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this past Sabbath, as I watched, I thought, 
He really loves doing children's ministry. This is our Mr. Robinson. He's all so, in, so kudos, kudos to Pastor Mark Raphael. Kudos. Well, and when we redeem the time, I think it's important. I, I, I listened to some commentary from Dr. Jason Allen, who's uh, the president of the Midwestern Seminary, a Baptist seminary in uh, Kansas City, I believe. And he said, perhaps the most important thing for us to remember when it comes to redeeming the time is to recognize that our attitude about time will really influence our actions about wow. time. We need to realize that even though this culture is constantly trying to find ways to lengthen the years, our days are numbered. Wow. We need to have wow. healthy respect for the fact that we can outrun a lot of things, but we cannot outrun death. Wow. So when we begin to, uh, to focus on redeeming the time, I think we need to start with our attitude about time. Recognize that time is a gift, it's limited. Uh, we shouldn't waste it. We need to, I believe, value the importance of self-care. Uh, Mr. President, I am literally blown over by the number of millennials who are beginning to explain how far they are to, how they are, I should say, to depression during this wow. period. And you, you really have to, to, to prioritize self-care during these critical moments. And so when we talk about redeeming the time, we're not necessarily uh, encouraging you to fill every waking moment with some activity. This might be a perfect time for you to just take a break, uh, get a clearer sense of what God's mission and purpose is for your life. And uh, I guess the last thing I would say is, in a sense, our days are numbered. But for those of us who know Christ, we got a lot of time ahead of us. And so we need to look. <laughs> We need to look at this pandemic and life against the backdrop of eternity. Amen. That's self-care. That's redeeming the time. Amen. You know what a lot of our executive friends are saying, Jess? That? that they have taken this moment, and this is the first time in years that they have slowed down. They're not in airports. They're not flying to meetings. They're not in committees. And they're working from Zoom. And even though, you know, the Zoom room is full of zeal and we get meetings all the time, um, but many, many are, are just taking a breath. Last Sabbath morning, I sat out on the back porch and had my devotional. You know, I was going to church. I, I didn't have to get there to make announcements. I did. It, it, it's remarkable. I said, oh, my God, is, is yeah. anybody else living a life like this right now? I don't know. I don't know. What, what, what are your thoughts, doctor? Uh, how, do we, how, do we, how do we do the self-care in more effective ways and in ways that move us beyond and anxiety? How do we do that? Well, we've, that's, that's what we've been attempting to over these last uh, broadcasts to communicate, that it's a matter of, I believe, focus. We looked at Matthew 25 last week, mm -hmm. and the important uh, uh, um, focus of Matthew 25, after we were encouraged not to worry, the reason for that was given to us because we have a father who takes full responsibility for all of the actions that we um, are involved in, all of the incidents, all of the accidents. He's not worried. He's not surprised. Mm -hmm. So our focus needs to be trust. That's a whole lot easier said than done. But in this time, this new normal, it gives us an opportunity to strengthen our relationship with the Lord through our prayer and our Bible study. Amen. Amen. And trust becoming the operative word to trust God. Amen. Um, is there any other Bible text, Dr. Wilson, that comes to mind that points us in the direction of a deeper trust in God during, during this pandemic? Can you think of one particular text, or maybe two, that speak to the issue of, of how we can deepen our trust in God right now? Yeah, I, I think the two that we've used, I want to use throughout are the two that I want to leave with everybody. Philippians 4, 6 through 9, I'm a lift, and uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Excellent passages. I would say one additional passage gives me strength, but it seems to cut two ways. It's Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a passage yes. that is, ex it is amazingly comforting during these Amen. times. Amen. In trouble, but it needs to be read in context. It needs to be yes. read correctly because the problem with Psalm 91 is that we're not the only ones who, who quoted that text. The devil quoted that text uh, during the temptation of Christ. He did. And it is a text that, if you understand it correctly, it is extremely comforting. 
If we don't get it right, it's a text that can give us a false sense of hope. That's why I say we should read the Bible in context, and we will develop the type of trust that I believe we need in these difficult times. Amen. Amen. And we don't, and to all our listeners, we, we are encouraging here at Oakwood Praise a true faith, not a false faith that's yeah. founded in presumption. And Psalm 91, as Dr. Wilson has pointed us to, reminds us that, yes, it says, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And that is very comforting. But what happens if a pestilence comes near your dwelling? Uh, that text, text is, is very important, given in the context of the Exodus, uh, speaking to the children of Israel when the plagues are falling. The, the, the point is that they would be protected when the judgments of God were falling in the land. And that brings us our comfort. But if that does not mean name it and claim it, whether it's prosperity, whether it's immunity, whether it's invincibility, mm-hmm. And the devil said to Satan, I mean, Satan said to Jesus, he said, cast down because it is written. Boy, the devil can quote that Bible, can't he? He did it. He did it. He said, he, he said it is written yep. that thou shalt, angels shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot. That's the passage that, that our pastor was pointing us to. And Jesus, understanding that he must exercise all due prudence in his thinking and in his talk says no I, I no that but that text does not mean you should tempt god by carelessness and recklessness okay so we were so we were working from home this frame just yeah, got so cool. beautiful man just, <laughs> yeah. So this is the way this is the way it's over. like. We need to start over. <laughs> this is what it's like when people work from home. Meet Genesis, my first granddaughter. So this is Genesis. Thank you, Jen. Let Papa finish. Okay. okay. This is Isaac's friend. Exactly. <laughs> you know Isaac. You know Isaac. Yes, that's Isaac's grandpa. That's Isaac's grandpa. Hey, this is uncut, everybody. This is real and uncut this is this is what it's like when you're working from home right this is what it's like this is what it's like um i had an employee today when the child came in just like this and she started apologizing she said oh excuse me excuse me Uh, i said no 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 you're working from home that 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 we're we're home and we're working the ratings too it helps the ratings (laughs) and it helps the rating so we were saying doctor and i'd like you to comment on it how do we avoid being presumptuous while claiming the promise is of God. I think again, and I, I hate to sound like a broken, but these passages, Psalm 91, Matthew 6, are as clear as day when they're read in context. And the consistent urging of those passages is to put your trust in God. It is absolutely not true that you need a PhD or a degree in biblical languages to understand and the clear word of God. It is as plain as day if scripture is compared with scripture and the cry over and over and over again is, I'm not worried, trust in me. Amen, amen. So families, Dr. Wilson, what would you say to families now who are sheltered at home? And uh, can you think of any specific ways that they can maximize these moments? I think that... um, Myron Edmund did a series on uh, family devotions. I think that the uh, one of the things that he brought out in his series was that I don't think we recognize the uh, the level that we're tethered to our devices. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that we can do to uh, help the time that we have to struggle through during this pandemic and prepare us for a better family context later is to really monitor the amount of time that we're really connected to these devices and to substitute those, that, that time with conversation, constructive conversation that many times the kids are allowed to initiate. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. Well, everyone, as we, as we continue to make our way forward during these uncertain times, I'd like to thank Dr. Jesse Wilson for being our guest tonight. We have nothing to fear for the future except we forget how God has led us in the past. And as a people group, we especially know 
that God will do for us that which we could not do for ourselves when we come to those spaces and places where his hand is needed. I think about our history, and I think about what that history means to all of us, how we have been blessed in this country to overcome many, many challenges. Recently, our world-famous Aeolians under the directorship of Dr. Jason Ferdinand decided to appropriate that historic hymn of freedom, we shall overcome, appropriate it and apply it to the coronavirus. We want you to worship as you enjoy this and we will see you on next week at Oakwood Praise. Please enjoy the Oakwood University Aeolians and we shall overcome. Hello everyone, crazy times, huh? March 11th, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. And it seems as if the world has come to a screeching halt. And in times like these, it's natural for everyone to be anxious and scared and not really sure of the future. There's a song that got us through one period in time. And I believe that same song can get us through this period. So from my family, the aliens, and myself, we just simply want to say, hold on, let's keep each other in prayer. And at the end of this, we can say we use this time to reset, to relax, and to recalibrate and become more connected with community. It's such a beautiful thing. I've seen more of my neighbors in these last few weeks than I've ever seen. So hold on, and we'll get through this together. We shall, we shall Oui.